Hello, everyone. Welcome to Measuring the RoboCat. Hey, Andrea. How are you? Not bad. How are you? I'm pretty good, actually. My recovery is 94% today. Oh, recovery. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm really into measuring my health lately. And I got this strap on my wrist that measures my heartbeat and my sleep. And every morning it says how recovered I am. Oh, nice. Like a, like a Fitbit? Yeah, exactly like that. Wow, that's pretty cool. But uh, do you find the data helpful, actually? Mostly. I mean, I do find it interesting to see how it changes over time um, and to know where where to focus my efforts. Like, should I rest today or should I really go for it? I wish we had something like that for continuous delivery. Oh, <laughs> like a, like a Fitbit for continuous delivery? Exactly. But I don't even know where we'd start. Hmm. Well, actually, I have a pretty good idea. Have you heard about the DORA matrix? Oh, wait. Yeah, that, that sounds really familiar. I wonder what those metrics would look like for the project that we both work on. Oh, that's a really interesting question. Hmm. Maybe we could take a look at how well Tecton itself measures up to the DORA matrix. That's a great idea. And, you know, it would be cool if we could throw some best practices in there too, like the basic mm. basic building blocks that would help us improve those metrics. I'd really like to see how Tecton stacks up. I agree, totally agree. And I mean, similar to how you're using the data to decide when to rest, when to exercise. And I think looking at this data will will help us, will help us guide on our own CD efforts as well. That is a really good idea. That makes total sense. Let's measure the RoboCat. Actually, maybe we should introduce ourselves first. Hi, everybody. I'm Christy Wilson. I lead the Tecton team at Google, and it's probably one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting project I've ever worked on. The first commit that we made in the repo is from August 2018, which makes us very close to Tecton's third birthday. I, I can't believe how fast time has flown. And having been responsible for a lot of our decisions early on in the project, I'm really excited to see how well we measure up. And hi, I'm Andrea Frittoli, and I work as a software engineer and developer advocate at IBM. My job is to work on open source which is also my passion, which is great. And it's especially fun working on Tecton. So I've been leading, leading the dog fooding work for Tecton since its early stages. It's been marvelous to see how the project and its community have grown and evolved over time. So today we're going to show you how we use the Dora metrics and best practices to measure Tecton our very own RoboCat. First, we'll start off by explaining a bit about what Tecton is, and then we'll dive into the measurements themselves. So first, what is Tecton? What is this RoboCat we're talking about? Tecton itself is a continuous delivery system. You could also call it a CICD system. It's built on top of Kubernetes using a mechanism for extending Kubernetes called custom resources or CRDs. It also uses the same kind of declarative resource model that Kubernetes itself uses, which is often called the Kubernetes resource model or KRM. Tecton has been donated to the CDF, that's the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and it's really a group effort. And both Andrea and I work on this project together. Yeah, thanks, Christy. And, um... As you said, Tecton is a continuous delivery system, so there is a bit of inception going on here. And yeah, we want to be really clear today that what we're going to talk about is the health of the Tecton project itself. So one of the things that we've been doing since the beginning is trying to eat our own dog food. Uh, so yeah, use Tecton to build and make Tecton itself. We're not all the way there yet, but we have placed a lot of importance 
on, on this. And we've worked on a lot of automation and continuous testing in place from the very beginning. And if you're familiar with the Tecton project, you probably know that when we say Tecton, we could mean the overall project or one of the 15 or so projects that are actually part of the Tecton organization. That's a good point, Andrea. So in this talk, when we say Tecton, we're actually talking about seven of those projects, uh, the ones that we collected these metrics for, which are pipelines, triggers, results, the CLI, dashboard, hub, and operator. But keep in mind that there's actually more to Tecton than just that. This is kind of an overview of what all the projects look like and how they relate to each other, or all the ones we're talking about today. We have the dashboard hub and CLI, which users will use to interact with our core APIs, which are results, pipelines, and triggers. And then there's the operator, which manages the installations of all these components. Yeah, indeed. So um, you could roughly group the project, the seven project in a few groups, and like the, the dashboard, the hub, and the CLI are the interfaces. Then we have the, the core components, pipeline, triggers, and results. And finally, the operator that manages them all. So I guess the question is with all this different and different kind of projects, um, how do we go about measuring their health? So just like you mentioned at the beginning, that's where the DORA metrics come in. The DORA metrics are four key metrics that indicate the performance of a software development team. They're based on six years of research from the DevOps Research and Assessment, or DORA, team. So what are these metrics? They are deployment frequency, lead time for changes, change failure rate, and time to restore a service. Now, something big that changes how these metrics are applied to our projects is the types of projects we're talking about. These metrics refer to service deployments and time to restore services, which makes perfect sense if your team is running a service, but what if you aren't? For Tecton, we do run some services, but ultimately we produce software that is actually run by other people. Let's take a look at the seven Tecton projects that we want to measure. What kind of projects are they? We can group them broadly into three categories. The hub, which is an interface to the Tecton catalog, is the one service that we run, available at hub.tecton.dev, and we need to release to it and keep it up and running. But the rest of our projects are all intended to be run and operated by other people. Five of them are run as services, and then there's the CLI, which will never be up and running and has no concept of uptime, downtime, et cetera. Wait, wait, you said we don't run um, the services. That's not entirely true. I mean, we do have a few of these projects in our dog fooling cluster up and running. Oh. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, that's just for us. That's not exactly for our customers. Well, yeah, it depends what you mean by customers. I mean, we have all the contributors at work on Tecton. Aren't they our customers too? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Well, I guess one is what we could do. We could look at these metrics and we could look at our deployments to the folding, maybe combine both words? That's a really good point. We could look at the deployments to our dog fooding cluster. And maybe another thing that we could do is we could take these metrics and instead of talking about deployments exclusively, we could also talk about releases. Hmm. So instead of deployment frequency, we could talk about release frequency. And instead of time to restore a service, we could talk about the time to release fixes. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. It sounds interesting indeed. Um, what we could do, maybe we could look at both um, releases and deployments and see what we can find out. Sound good. The more data, the better. Okay, so the first metric we are looking at 
is the deployment frequency, which we could also call release frequency then. So this is a measurement of how often an organization successfully deploys to production, or then in our cases, releases to end users. The DORA folks have measured what this metric looked like for the four groups of performance, starting from low to medium, high, and elite. This means that although it's just a correlation, you can get a sense of which kind of performer your project is, just by looking at how your metrics compare to these groups. For deployment frequency, uh, specifically elite performers deploy multiple times per day, while low performers take one month or more many months to deploy. So let's take a look at how Tackle measures up. So remember that Hub and our dog footing services are the only actual running services that we deploy. So we're going to take a look at Tecton from a couple of different angles. So looking at release frequency, this is um, an overview at a glance of our seven highlighted projects. And you can see that we started very early with pipeline and then CLI and dashboard followed soon after triggers came then and more recently we had releases for the other three projects we are discussing about so hub um, and operator and results which only had two releases so far so if we look at the numbers for all these projects and we compare them against uh, the dora uh, groups the dora buckets we we'll see that we have a few of the projects um, that would perform as medium, like pipelines, triggers, CLI, and dashboard. And the more recent ones, results, hub, and operator, they are still in the low bucket. So if we consider um, nightly releases as well, that takes four of our projects into a higher bucket, in the high bucket, because then we have an average day between releases that goes to one. The reason we are a bit hesitant to include nightly releases though, is that, um, well, you can install them, uh, but we don't have release notes for them uh, published on GitHub uh, with warnings and upgrade notes and so forth. And so um, users would have to discover these releases, find out what's inside before they, they install them. A potential way we could improve this then would be to, to publish our um, to publish our night releases along with release notes as well. We would have to do a bit more automation work in the release note generation, but not too much. So now instead of um, looking at the lens of releases, we could also look at our deployments to the footing, uh, as we discussed. And yeah, these deployments are actually a bit less frequent than our releases. So often what we do, we wait a little bit to see is there, maybe there was a regression or some issue reported that we would do a minor release and we don't want to get that issue directly into our dog fooding cluster, which is dear to us. Um, so at the end, we end up pretty much in the same performance category. So for pipeline, triggers and dashboard, which we deployed to the footing, we would be medium and result as well. It was only deployed once, so we consider it low uh, performance there. So if you put all together uh, the different views or lenses that we have seen on uh, deployment and release frequency, we end up with um, most of our project is overall in the medium bucket, except for hub and results, which are most recent ones in the low. Operator uh, is current to medium because it, it's, it's uh, building nightly releases. So that increases a little bit its performance. Nice. Thanks, Andrea. That was really interesting. I feel like we found out a lot already about some potential improvements we could make. Let's look at the next of the four DORA metrics, which is lead time for changes. This is how long it takes a commit to get into production. Elite performers get changes into production within the same day, and low performers take multiple months. So for Tekton, we're going to define production as making releases available to our customers. Even with this metric, there are a few different ways we could look at this for Tekton. The first way we're going to look at it is the time between releases. 
So if a commit is merged, it's going to automatically make it into the next release. And you can see that there's actually a pretty wide range of averages here. We go from 35 days for pipeline releases up to currently 78 days for results. But again, we have far fewer releases to look at. But all of these fall into the low performance bucket. So that didn't look super great. But a different way we could look at it is, what's the time between when a change is actually merged and when it makes it into a release? So instead of just looking at the time between releases, we can look at the time from when something is merged to when it actually makes it into a release. And that looks a little bit better. And we're kind of back on track for medium performance in most of our projects, except for the operator, which is a little bit of an outlier and has a lower performance. So that was a little bit better. But it's ignoring all the time that has to pass from when you actually open a pull request and when the merge happens. For example, all the code review and back and forth that comes with that. So one more way that we could look at this is the time between when somebody opens a pull request and then when the change actually makes it into a release. And when we look at it through this lens, our metrics become a mix of medium and low performance. So this is how the second DORA metric shapes up overall for our Tecton, with us, again, attempting to kind of average the performances to draw a conclusion overall. Now, the operator has a significant disadvantage here because it is downstream of all the other projects. It literally bundles them all together. So its lead time and its performance is probably always going to be less than the other projects. So if we improve the other projects, we'd probably see the operator improve as well. Yeah, thanks, Christy. That was really interesting. And that's half of the Dora metrics down. So, and the two metrics that we just looked at have to do with getting changes in the hands of customer, whether it's a through release or deployed in an environment that they can use. Uh, but the last two have to do with things going wrong. And so the third one that we are looking at now is change failure rate which is represent the percentage of deployment causing a failure in production which in our case translates to um, the percentage of releases which we need a patch fix for. So that is, if the release contains a bug that is serious enough um, that we need to make a new release to fix it. So to measure this one for Tecton, we look at the percentage of releases which require the patch fix. Um, and so, we have a, a range of uh, percentage. You can see from, uh, well, Hub, which has zero, doing really well, um, up to Trigger, 61. Uh, but if we compare this to the buckets uh, from uh, the Dora matrix, um, we can say that CLI and the operator fall a little bit into a known land, but it's in the middle, so we grant them a medium performance there. Um, one thing that is um, interesting about the way that you're measuring this is that if we had more releases, the metric probably would go down. Um, for example, if you're doing release every day or counting our nightly releases, then the ratio between releases and patch releases would skyrocket. Right? And if we were releasing that frequently, maybe we wouldn't even need patch releases at all. Um, just you know, just wait for the next day for the next release and that the fix is in. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. And I think it's very related to the last Dora metric, which is the time to restore our service, or in our case, the time to patch a release when there's a problem. Looking at these intervals for elite, high, medium, and low performers, it feels like it might be a little bit unfair to talk about this with releases. Because if you're talking about deployments, you can automate away a rollback or you can route traffic to working versions instead of a version with an error, and that would count as restoring the service. But you can't really automate identifying and fixing a regression in a release. Even if the resulting patch is a git revert, you're still going to have to involve a person to go in, see that it needs a revert, do the revert, and then decide to make the new release. So it might not be totally fair, but we're going to take a look anyway.
So we measured this in Tecton by looking at the days between patch releases. So we started initially with a minor release. That's because we don't actually have any major releases yet, but soon. So we started with a minor release and then the subsequent patch, and then the, the time between all of the patches that occurred after that. We feel like this is a good representation of the metric for us, because for us, a failure in production is a release with a critical bug. And when we have a critical bug, we do a patch. The fact that the gap is so wide here indicates that likely we could do some work to improve our testing and catch these things before they actually make it into releases. So for example, we could run some of our tests against a full deployment on a nightly basis, or we could run tests in more combinations to catch these, to catch these things and not rely on our customers to catch them for us. Running more combinations of test scenarios would normally be pretty expensive, but we're actually looking into a way to make this cheaper using a tool called Kind, which is Kubernetes and Docker and lets us run much more lightweight Kubernetes clusters. Whew. Okay, well, that was pretty fun. What does it look like when we put them all together? This is an overview of all the metrics we just looked at across all of our projects. And then we kind of tried to average them to draw a conclusion about each project. In general, you can see that the metrics look better when we're talking about releasing and getting changes out, and we don't do as well for the metrics around failures. However, one probably impacts the other, as we've discussed, if we were releasing more, we would probably have a lower change failure rate. Also, the metrics for the hub are kind of interesting. Until very recently, we were releasing and deploying manually, so we didn't have that many data points to work with. This exercise has raised some questions for us about how to apply these metrics to Tecton. Since we aren't running any services, except for dog fooding, we focus mostly on releases. But in that case, should we, be per com should we be comparing our metrics to the performance of projects which do new deployments? Also, Tecton is an open source project. And as we mentioned at the beginning, we have contributors from more than 150 different companies. So certainly the time to get a change in is going to be very different in an environment like that than it is for proprietary software. And lastly, time to restore, which is a metric we particularly suffered in, is tough. When you find a bug in a release, you can't exactly just roll it back the same way you can with a deployment. You have to revert the changes. And even in that case, it requires manual intervention. With all of that being said, we're going to round up and give ourselves a medium performance rating overall, which feels pretty decent, especially in light of all the questions we raised. So what could we do to get even better? We mentioned that we had nightly releases for several projects, but we were hesitant to call them releases since we don't advertise them or create release notes for them. So if we supported these a bit better and actually numbered our releases and created release notes, that would likely improve all of the metrics. Well, thanks, Christy. So, well, not bad, you're doing medium. So, um, but besides the Dora metrics, uh, we also took a look at how well we are following best practices for continuous delivery. So we'll take a quick look at this, um, how, what we evaluated. So we don't really want to say that these are the best practices, um, even though you could stay tuned for the findings of the uh, CDF best practices working group as they're actually looking at <laughs> defining those. Um, so this is more about like some more lenses to look at the project through. And it's interesting we see some relationship with what we've seen with Dora metrics. Um, since these are kind of a bit harder to measure, um, but still they should impact the Dora metrics in the long run. And you can think of uh, like going back to the example of the Fitbit, how your diet will affect your fitness, fitness performance, but uh, fitness trackers have a bit of a harder time measuring your diet, what you're eating. So um, yeah, so what we did, we analyzed some of the city best practices. So we looked at like the brain strategy, the test coverage, things like um, the test matrices that we are running, how we, well we store test results, nightly releases, full releases, and finally continuous deployment. So the younger project like Hub and Results are still in the process of ramping up. And you see a few red crosses there um, in the table. Test 
matrices and test result collection, analysis of the flakes are areas where we could improve in general across all the projects. So for instance, something that we do, we started doing recently in pipelines is uh, testing both the stable as well as the alpha uh, version flavor of the API. So other options that we could do specific in the pipeline project, but also in other projects are testing, for instance, against different version of Kubernetes. Uh, we only use one specific version now, or we could test on top of different cloud providers um, or even using different container runtimes. We had issues reported with specific container runtimes before. So, but apart from these areas, I mean, improving on the, the met matrix testing, I think Tecton is in pretty good shape. Yeah, I, I agree. I think overall, we feel pretty good about how Tecton is doing. When we look through the lens of the Dora metrics, we're a medium performer, and we're able to use that to identify that if we increase our release frequency, it's a pretty clear path to getting to high or maybe even elite performance. And by looking at some of the best practices, we could see some clear areas for improvement, specifically around the periodic and matrix testing, which would probably have a positive impact on our weakest metrics around the change failure rate. So just looking at our projects through these two lenses was really informative. And as an open source project in particular, I feel like there are always a million things that need to be done. So it's really helpful to see how these metrics can show us where it's worth focusing our attention. And we're willing to bet that you'd find these lenses just as insightful for your projects. Even if you just started with measuring your deployment or release frequency, that would be a great place to start, especially since it seems to impact all of the other three metrics. So maybe take a look at your project, measure the release frequency, and you can find out how does your project measure up? Are you an elite performer or do you have a ways to go? And that's all that we have for you today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Christy. Hey, Andrea. Hi, Christy. Hello, everyone. Well, so I think we have time for a few questions and it looks like we've got one from Adam already. I wish that <laughs> um, I think we both wrote scripts for this that could more or less be applied to any project. But I don't think they're mine at least is not in like a production ready <laughs> sort of state. Yeah, well, we, we do have some scripts and I think uh, they maybe not production ready, but they're I think based on GitHub API uh, a lot, uh, so you can definitely share those um, if you want. And um, in, in future, um, we'd like to. We, we thought about we could uh, start using events, cloud events, at least for the services that are running, like Hub and uh, Results. That we we run them as services, so we, we could uh, collect data about installed releases from there. Does anybody else have any questions? It looks like we got a few people filling out the polls. Um, half of the respondees are using Tecton already, so that's pretty cool. Nice. And if you already started measuring their DevOps metrics or trying to get started, which is quite positive. I think so we if had... I want... Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, if I were to ask you a question is, um, let's say I want to contribute to Tecton, where do I get started? Well, um, we have a community repo that has a, it should have answers to most or all of the questions that you might have about that. 
Um, it has information about our Slack, our mailing lists, our working group meetings, um, and how to propose projects, how to find something to work on. Um, we'd be more than happy to have anyone who's interested in joining. Um, oh, and Adam has a link to, but oh, Shipwright, uh, auto draft release notes. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've, we, ha we have something that auto drafts release notes as well. I don't know, maybe this goes a bit further. Um, it seems like maybe there's there's definitely a tool I think that people will be very happy to have around this. Ours is just still a little bit manual in that I don't know you, you ha everyone has to write really good release notes right away in order for the, the in order for doing it automatically to work. I feel like there's always something that we need to tweak a little bit, um, or or we just embrace that I guess and just allow them to be a bit flawed. Um, but thanks thanks for the link. I think we're at time. So does anybody have anything else they'd like to? Oh, wait, one more question. You mentioned CD best practices. Can you mention a few of those? Um, so there are a few in the slides that are linked. There's a few mentioned at a high level in the slides that we linked to. There's also a best practices um, special interest group as part of the CDF, um, which you might be interested in, which is trying to kind of nail those best practices down. Um, I think there's a Git repo with more information and there might be a birds of a feather about it as well, but I'm not sure if we've uh, missed that already. But here is the, um, the information on the on the working group if you want to join. Uh, but at a high level, I think version control is the very first thing you definitely need. Definitely testing and then there's kind of more that you can add about testing. Um, it like degrees of like unit testing, integration testing, system testing, um, definitely keeping your source code always in a releasable state so you have version control and you always feel like you could release at any time um, and then from there um, automate it, making it possible to easily do the release um, so you might not go as far as continuous deployment but at least uh, it should be it should be as simple as hitting a button um, to actually make the release uh, those are some that come to, to mind for me andre i think you had some more that you mentioned in the talk as well um, well, we had some about yeah testing and kind of coverage testing matrices, uh, different testing against different combination in our cases, against different combination of Kubernetes, for instance, a different uh, container runtimes so or different configuration of feature flags, and also keeping a tap on your uh, flags. Um, so in the test results and so tracking test results and making sure that you're on top of uh, flakes and also nightly tests, periodic tests. So if you have more long running tests that you cannot fit into the like uh, standard CI to have those running on a regular basis and collecting results and monitor them. And thanks Terry for the mention, the birds of the feather for SIG best practices is tomorrow if people want to join. Uh, question, can Tecton replace Jenkins in the future? Um, maybe. I think I think our ideal might be more like Jenkins interoperates with Tecton, so you could use what you liked about Jenkins and what you like about Tecton. And I believe that there's actually a plugin that lets you use Tecton from Jenkins. Um, so I think our ideal would be less of a replacement and more of a working together. Um, Definitely, yeah, we're striking for interoperability. And I think there is a. Um, Jenkins contributor meetup on Friday or something. There is going to be uh, talking about the Jenkins to detect them plugin if you're interested in that. There's a Jenkins blog post about uh, Tecton and, oh, and Jenkins X from Jenkins. Um, oh, thanks, Jirop. <laughs> Great. Well, okay. that might be it. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, hope to see you in person one day. <laughs> but this is this feels very similar. So, it's, and and now I can go. Uh, I'll be in, in my house afterwards instead of wandering around a conference for. I don't know if that's better or worse. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> this is recorded, isn't it? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm done. Everything's good. Everything's great. <laughs> thanks everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Christy. Bye. Bye.